Our first speaker of the evening is a theater director, actor, and educator who ran away to join the library. Originally from Southern California, she now lives in Calgary with her wife, Glynis, and fur baby, Joplin. Please welcome Alisa Braddock to the stage. Number one, hold on to your butts. I was literally born overdue. I was supposed to be born on April the 11th, but I was born four days later on April the 15th, which is American Tax Day, the day that Abraham Lincoln died, the day the Titanic sank, and the day that the Boston Marathon bombing happened. This is not the only thing that is overdue about me. Um, I'm just going to keep talking because my slide's not done yet. My mother was an actor who turned local government worker, and when she was eight months pregnant with me, she was also on in a show at the same time playing a character who was also eight months pregnant. I was literally on stage every night. I kicked on cue every night. I was fabulous, and I was born into the theater. Um, <laughs> Next is my dad right there, um, the director, producer, artistic director, professor. Um, I grew up going to rehearsals. Actors were my friends and my babysitters. I grew up watching actors struggling through stories with complex emotions. The stories aren't real, the characters aren't real, but the truth of the stories and the truth of the human behavior is real. This is me in my very first university play. To audition for this play, uh, I used a poem from The Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll and The Ring Speech from Twelfth Night. Um, this was my very first audition ever. I had absolutely no I what idea what I was doing. Um, the pieces were pretty much the equivalent of Merry and Pippin agreeing to go deliver the ring to Mordor without fully understanding what was happening to them at the time. <laughs> this is me in one of the last shows that I've done. I played Festy in Twelfth Night. Um, this is me playing the fool. Um, it's the crowning achievement in my career. Um, that is 100% honest. Um, someday my autobiography might read Just a Fool with Maracas. Um, the weird thing about acting is that one spends a great amount of time, emotion, thought, and energy trying to use one's own experience to access a fictional character in search for a truth. In this picture, I'm witch number one in Macbeth. Um, and what I was trying to do was break down heteronormative patriarchy because screw those guys, but that wasn't me, that's a witch, right? Um, and at some point I started to realize that I just wanted to be more. So you know that I'm an American, um, you know that I was raised by theater artists, you know that I was born four days overdue, and now you know that I also work for the Calgary Public Library. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, in January, I will be celebrating five years um, as a proud library employee, and it's the longest non-arts job I've ever had in my life. Um, my undergrad's university motto is non nobis solum nati sumus, which translates to not into ourselves alone are we born. This is a cornerstone of my worldview um, and part of what I love about the library, community, service, <laughs> equity, connection. Here are some examples. Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind. Um, I found this piece of paper next to a de desktop computer um, left by a young man who came into the library every night looking for, you guessed it, pictures of RuPaul. He was looking for tattoos. He got two RuPaul tattoos on either bicep. Um, one day, a man asked for help uh, on a government document. It's a really common request here at the library. Um, and he was seeking help for bureaucracy. Being a permanent resident myself, I tried to help him. Um, and I did. I got him an emergency meeting with the consulate. Um, he thanked me. He asked if I liked the blues. That man was Sonny Rhodes. Um, so here I am. I'm an artist kid who came up to Canada to get an MFA in theater. Three months into my work visa, I get a call from a manager at the Saddletown Library asking if, I, if I'm interested in employment. Heck, yes, I was. Um, I learned how to help connect people with books. I learned about early learning development. I learned 32 years overdue that if you don't like reading a book, you need to put it down and find a new one. Um, <laughs> this is Charlie. I met Charlie at a program called Library Month at your day home. Um, Charlie is helping put up a flannel graph story right there. Um, not once in the month that I went to Charlie's day home did he ever take that pacifier out of his mouth. Um, my next slide is Amy and Amari, um, and I went to their day home as well, and they loved playing with toys, and they loved the color pink, and then they would start to sing songs with me, and then about halfway through, they would just sort of ghost out and leave me to keep singing by myself alone in a van. True story. 
Um, and I would be lying if I said that I never use my theatrical training in my work at the library. I would be lying if I said that my story times were boring. And I would be lying if I said that I didn't ever get to be silly or act like a fool. Um, one of the hardest things for me to wrestle with since working here, though, is am I still an artist if I'm not a full-time artist? And I think we can tell that the answer is still yes. Um, <laughs> I was once uh, an artist at a residence at a middle school and a sixth grader came up to me and said, Miss Braddock, did you know that if you don't fart, you could die? And I was like, yeah, totally. This is Farley Farts. And if you have any school-age children in your life, get toilet humor books because they love them. Um, this is a photo from the best legitimate meeting I've ever been a part of here at the library. Um, it was a meeting to revamp the teen summer reading program. Um, it was three hours. We accomplished everything on the agenda. We played this cool card game. It was so rad. Um, and, oh no, where did I go? <laughs> yeah, it was a really good meeting. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a photo um, f uh, that I took of some flowers that women left for me at the library when I told them that I was changing locations and I helped them with technology every day. And that instant gratification is something that I didn't ever get to see in theater and it means so much to me and it's such an awesome part of my job. This is me owning myself. This is me stepping forward as a queer woman. Um, in theater, I don't often get to play queer women. I don't get to be a queer woman. I'm supposed to be a neutral body. And here at the library, I get to own short hair, don't care, being visibly queer inside homophobia, which is pretty big. Um, I'm just going to throw this away. This is my library family up at Saddletown. I have library family all over. Manpreet is here somewhere. He and I worked at Saddletown together. Every time I see him, my eyes light up. It's much like a production. We are a family. We come together. Um, the library is full of people who just care their hearts out every single day. This is a view of my office now at my current library. Um, and I cannot tell you enough how much it means to me that I got to run away and find myself at a place that appreciates inclusivity, inclusivity, creativity, and love for all people of this city.